G'day, welcome back to the factory. Today we're going to be applying solder paste to a PCB panel using a solder paste stencil and stenciling machine. If none of that means anything to you, we have a video that introduces the PCB manufacturing process. Let's get started. Solder paste is applied to a PCB panel through a stencil. The stencil is cut just so the solder paste only goes exactly where it's needed. That's on the component pads on the panel. As you can probably imagine with small electronics, correct alignment of the stencil with the panel is critical. Enter the stencil machine. This is a manual stencil machine. The machine allows repeatable alignment of the stencil with the panel so that you can paste panel after panel quickly. I'll set up this machine for this design so you can see the workflow. Let's get started. I'm going to secure the panel to the fixture plate on the stencil machine using these supports. There's a three millimeter hole machined in every panel. There's a, a pattern of three millimeter holes and there's a matching three millimeter pin in the support. So when we come over to the fixture plate, I can roughly center the panel with the supports and the remaining two supports don't have those alignment pins in them. They could, but for ease of setup, I found that two pins seems to be enough. With the panel placed generally, I can now loosely fasten the supports in place. Now that we have a generally centered panel, with the stencil loosely centered on the fixture plate, I can now see where I want to provide additional supports. This is just four points of contact. So there's a lot of bowing that the panel can do at the moment. So now that I, now that I have a general location, I know that I want to support each one of these PCBs. And for that, we use these machined brass pins. So this pin is machined to go into the fixture plate into any of the holes and the top of the pin will come to the same height as the shoulder on the support. I'll take the panel off and I usually start just by scattering these pins out. We have quite a lot, so we can provide a fair bit of support. I have seen online that uh, some people use a machined piece of aluminium billet just as a, a large block to sit uh, in the space of the panel, just so you don't have to place these pins. That might be something for us to look into. And I like to, I like to perform a little tap test just to make sure each individual PCB has adequate support. Next up, fit the stencil to the hinge. This just gets held in place by these two clamps. Of course, make sure it's the same orientation as the design in your panel. Now we set the height of the stencil to match the height of the panel. Of course, you could have a PCB panel of varying thicknesses. And also by setting the height at one end with the hinge, you also correct for any angle that might develop once that hinge is closed. If your hinge is too low, the stencil could separate at the far end, for example. To adjust the height, we have four screws that are the same on each side. So we have the locking screws, which I'll unlock and then the height adjustment screws. So I'll just change the height on each side and perform a little tap test and listen for any drumming. If there's a gap between the stencil and the panel, the, the sound will change. That all sounds pretty good. So I should have a level stencil so I can lock those screws. Now remember, the panel is only loosely positioned on the fixture plate. I leave it like this so that I can manually get the alignment pretty good before bothering with the fine adjustments. I found this to be a really fast way to get started. If I can manually bring those pads into the apertures, and once that's close enough to get started, carefully open the machine, carefully remove the panel without bumping those supports, and then tighten them down while holding them in place. If they do move a little in this step, that's okay. You can just back them off and try again. 
So our panel is fixed in place and it's roughly aligned. Now for the fine alignment. I like to do that coarse alignment first because the fine adjustments on this machine only have about 25 millimeters of travel. So the closer you get that coarse fit, the, the easier this next step is, which is the fine alignment. And I can see here already, basically all the pads are showing through the stencil. Some are better than others though. So there is some adjusting to do. I can see that up the top here, uh, if, so the, the, bottom, the bottom pads are basically filling the stencil in one corner. But in the opposite corner, they're shifted to the side. So that tells me there's a little bit of rotation. So I'll use the, the angle adjustment screw to bring those in. And as you adjust the angle to bring in one set of pads, often another set drift out slowly. So there's this kind of round robin adjusting process that I go through where you, you get things just a little bit better each time. And you do that one or two, maybe three times and everything's pretty good. Now for the stenciling. For that, I'll need these tools. One is a spatula for depositing solder paste onto the stencil. And the other is the squeegee for actually performing the stenciling. Today, I'm using a lead-free chip quick brand solder that is a T3. T3 just refers to the size of the solder granules. Really important, make sure your solder paste is at room temperature before you start, before you even bother stenciling. I tried uh, a couple of times before I got impatient with solder paste that hadn't been out of the fridge too long and it was just a mess. So make sure your paste is at the right temperature. Gloves on time. I'm gonna apply the solder paste to the stencil with the spatula. It always seems like you need more than you think. So I'm gonna be quite generous because you can always reclaim the paste from the stencil afterwards. This next part feels very much like a craft. I, I freely admit that I don't have this down perfect yet. There's, there seems to be a, a perfect angle and pressure and speed to get the stenciling process just right. This seems to be the most risky part of the whole process. So if you're new to this, I still am, then have a play. I'm gonna set my angle at the top of the stencil and just do a firm wipe down. I'm looking for streaking left behind in the stenciling. Some areas of the stencil are completely clean and others leave behind a, a residue of solder paste. I've done a pass in one direction. I'd like to do a pass in at least two. So I'll, this time I'll go 90 degrees. All the pads look like they've been filled, so I'll recover the paste. Of course, if you were doing more than one panel, this would be where you would just remove this panel and proceed with the next. Way back at the start, I mentioned the three millimeter alignment pins that hold the panel in place. The height of those pins is quite important. I like to set the height so that they stick out of the panel just enough to engage with the stencil but not enough to stick proud of the stenciling surface. If you're dragging a stainless steel squeegee across your stencil, you don't wanna be dragging it over some hard alignment pins that are sticking up through it. So that, thankfully that's something that only needs to be set once. Well, we've pasted our panel. Now we have to recover it from the stencil machine. I don't really know if there's like a best way to do this. My, my method that seems to work for me is to just very slowly crack open the panel until you see all the all the solder paste and all the all the holes disappear and that means the panel's not sticking to the stencil that looks pretty good let's uh let's jump on the microscope and have a closer look and maybe the maybe our keen-eyed viewers can provide some feedback on how this looks but in general i'm pretty happy with how this turned out I think I could definitely work on my technique. There's a few pads that are looking a little lopsided and that may have been from say a, a final pass that I did with the squeegee. Might have pulled the solder to the side a bit. You can see a bit of, I guess this would be like under spray or something. I don't think that's a problem. Definitely not for this board. Uh, that's not a problem, but I don't think that's a problem in general for 
for most components because that solder should pull together. But definitely a little bit of consistency to work on. Otherwise, pretty happy with these results. This is a, a great board for, for learning how to stencil because these are, these are very forgiving components. There you have it, a pasted panel. Obviously this workflow evolved around this particular machine, but I'm sure it's transferable to other manual machines as well. If you're a solder stenciling aficionado, I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, or any comments about squeegee angle, pressure. What do you think of these results? Do you have like a favorite solder paste? It's all good. The technical stuff, uh, the best place for that is in our forums. Thanks for watching.